17, verse 7. I wish we all know this song. It's a powerful song. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Holding nothing. Genesis 17, verse 7. Holding nothing. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all. I give to you withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Father God, we want to thank you this morning for this wonderful moment in your presence, O Lord. We thank you for your grace, we thank you for your glory, we thank you for your presence. And here we are, Lord, to hear your word. Father, we pray for the spirit of anointing, for the spirit of revelation, for the spirit of power. And may you alone take the lead. May you speak to us, spirit of God. And may you bless us as we hear your word. We surrender before you, Lord. We do not hold. We, we do not withhold anything from you, but we surrender all of our beings unto you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence, and we resist every plan of the devil against this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you reign, may you speak unto us, and bless us for the glory of your name, we pray. Amen. Genesis 17, verse 7. The Bible reads, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. I'll repeat again. And I will establish my covenant so this is God talking to Abraham. Between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Amen. Can we move to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 7? Second Corinthians chapter three, verses six to seven. The Bible reads, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse five to six. Note that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've recently been talking about a message. Hallelujah. So we started talking about obedience to God's word, and then we continued on talking about the relationship with God. Amen. 
And so when we say we love God, we have to obey his word, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. There is no way we will claim we love God if we do not obey his word. In fact, the first sign to confirm that we love God it is to obey his word. <laughs> Amen. So this is the first sign. So we cannot say we love him if we haven't obeyed him. Amen. And last Sunday we say that uh, 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 obedience okay is where there is a relationship. Amen. And can I say that where we are today, who you are today, it is a result of the obedience of somebody. Amen. It is a result of obedience of somebody to God's ways, to God's command. And we were emphasizing the need and saying that. Obedience to God's word, it is the key to our greatness. It is the key to our success. It is the key to everything that we need in life and for life and about life. Amen. And we mentioned that as long as we remain obedient to his word, we should not be afraid of anything. Whether we look short, solar, black, or red, as long as our mind tells us that I am obeying the word of God, then I should not be afraid of anything. And then I should tell myself that I can do anything as long as I obey the Father God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Amen. <laughs> Where you are today, it is a result of obedience. Amen. It is just as simple as it is. Now God says to Abraham, we all of us enjoy the blessings of Abraham today. We make declarations, we pray, that I pray that the blessings of Abraham may overtake me. But it took Abraham obedience for you to declare what you can declare today. And it was just in a simple sentence, Abraham, can you, I command you to live to a land, go to a land that I will show you. <laughs> Is not as simple as it was. I, 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 I want to believe that if it was you, there were going to be questions. Where am I going, God? Which country? Which land? What is there? <laughs> Amen. Is there a job there? That was going to be question number one. <laughs> is there a job there? Amen. Maybe for those who enjoy driving, is there a car? <laughs> and for us who are married, God, can, not, can you give me a day? I just want to discuss this command with my wife. <laughs> and the moment it takes a day, then something else could come in. Hey! God, I've got a family, I've got five children. If you have five like me, then it was, oh, I've got five. <laughs> Who is going to feed them? It is, yeah, that's a natural fact. If you just appeared and told me, Pastor Amos, can you move to the U.S.? I will just ask you questions. What do you think about my five children, man? I've got a job here. No one knows me in the U.S. What's going to be the question? Abraham, I command you to live. Go to a land that I will show you. Amen. Amen. And so now people today, we declare we are great, we are big, we are blessed. But I tell you that there is a key to unlocking those blessings. It is obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. Just going back a little bit so we understand what we want to talk about this morning. And then we say that when Abraham obeyed the word of God, he entered in a relationship with God. 
then things started getting a bit serious. <laughs> because at this particular, you, it, oh, you see, the Bible does not tell us what happened, how it happened. All we know and what the Bible shows us is that God appeared to Abraham, and he said to Abraham, go off to a land that I'll show you. I want to believe that Abraham had, had not known God before. This is what I believe. I'm not sure I haven't come across where it shows that Abraham had been in contact with God. But this was just God's choice in his sovereignty that he came to Abraham. Go to a land that I will show you. Now, as he obeyed, a relationship started. Now, what happens from there? As we have spoken about obedience relationship. Now what happens after these two things have taken place? God moves to the next level of the relationship. And this is what I want to talk about this morning. God enters into what we call into another dimension, into another level of relationship that is called the covenant. Ah! <laughs> the covenant. The covenant. Amen. Uh, you look too serious. Can you do me a favor? Ask your neighbor, are you here? No, what? even if they look serious, still ask them. Even if they don't give you a smile, just ask them. <laughs> do me a favor. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if they don't smile, some people struggle to smile. Just ask them. <laughs> and when you smile, you do a favor to your, to your body, to your health. Don't stay serious for two hours. Just smile. What's wrong? Even at church, you don't smile. At work, you don't smile. At, at home, you don't smile. What's wrong? Just give yourself a smile. When you smile, it doesn't take you out of the spirit. You can still be in the spirit while you smile. Because we Pentecostals, everything, we say, no, no, I'm in the spirit. No, 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 I can still smile even when I'm in the spirit. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now God moves to the next level of the relationship. What is called the covenant. Now this becomes a bit more serious. Because the covenant, it is now a kind of relationship that can never be broken. It is something, it is a relationship that lasts forever. Amen. In traditional cultures, covenant occurred with, if two people entered into a covenant, they had to just do this. They cut themselves and, and mix the blood, isn't it? And when my blood enters your blood, then it is eternal. There's no oppression that is going to remove that. <laughs> Amen. It becomes unbroken. It becomes unbroken. Now I just want you to take, on, to take you on this journey. Now this is what God does. And now, can I tell you what happens here now? We started talking about obedience, moving to relationship, and then going a bit higher to the covenant. And there are things that happen at each and every stage here. There are some of the things. Ah! Ja, 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 ja. So now can I show you something here? So when God spoke to Abraham that Abraham go, there were some other things that Abraham did not experience at this particular point until he embarked on the journey. When he made the first step, things now started unfolding. Now, can I go a little bit deeper? So this is why we limit the move of God in our lives, because we want to see, we, wa hey, we just want to see things that are going to happen in the 50 years' time today. Sometimes we may not see the, all of everything in one day or in one encounter with God and sometimes God will test our faith <laughs> if, I this, this, if I give this 
just meant a Mercedes, but it is my dream car. Is he still going to come back to church? Or oh, is he going just to, to go to, to Sefer's paradise on Sunday and forget about the church? This is why maybe I haven't received my Mercedes Benz, but I wish I received it soon in the name of Jesus. Uh, I, 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 I feel I'm offending Pentecostal people here. <laughs> I feel I'm offending people who say they're in spirit. There is not a sin when I drive a Mercedes Benz. And some people say, hey, our pastor is now working, he's now walking in the flesh. No. no, no. Just pray for me that God gives me the Mercedes Benz. <laughs> now, this is what happens. Amen. Yeah, sure. And the Bible says that when we delight in him, he shall give us the desires of our hearts. This is what happens. (laughs) I haven't seen, if you see me driving a Mercedes Benz tomorrow. Just still believe that I'm still carrying the anointing even in the Mercedes Benz. The same way I'm carrying the anointing in the the Toyota, the the, the, the same anointing will go in the Mercedes Benz. Don't doubt my ministry when you see me driving a Mercedes Benz. I'll still be a man of God. He shall give me the desires of my heart. Now what happens here? Now when God spoke to Abraham, and Abraham, the Bible says, he obeyed. And he embarked on the journey which he did not know where he was going. Now listen to what happened. The Bible says, when that took place, that God established his covenant between Abraham and himself. Now, if you read Genesis chapter 15, amen, you will see here now, because God spoke to Abraham, the Bible shows us here. So this is Genesis chapter 12, when he commanded him to leave his country. Now, when you get to chapter 15, Genesis, you will see God here appearing to Abraham now. And he asks Abraham to offer him an offering. And can you see what happens here? Now God comes to Abraham. Then he starts unfolding, revealing things that are going to take place in the line during the covenant between him and Abraham. Now, God tells Abraham, watch over these offerings. But the Bible says that Abraham was tired and he slept. And God came to him in that dream while he was sleeping. And God now, after he has established the covenant, God spoke to Abraham that your descendants will go into captivity for 400 years. Hey, can I go deeper here? Now, there are some of the things that God will not reveal to us until we get to a stage when we are trusted by him. Ah. (laughs) There are things he will not reveal. Now, after the covenant has, has taken place, now God was able to reveal Things that was that were going to take place in the future. Amen. So are you getting something here? So I'm trying to illustrate the point that God, that all this story here started from obedience to relationship to a higher level of the relationship that cannot be broken. Now. Everything that was happening here, mind you, this was just a copy of something original that was to take place in the future. This was just the shadow of things that you and me, we are enjoying today. (laughs) And the people like Moses are just walking are just enjoying the blessings of the covenant that God established between him and Abraham. Amen. 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 (laughs) 
When the Bible says, look, look, when the Bible says that there is no man who spoke with God face to face as Moses, is it not a great privilege? Is it not a great blessing? Amen. Now when the Bible says, ah, now, now when, if you read the Bible, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Moses here. So, so that we can link something here and go where we want to go. Now here, so Moses, again chosen by God. Amen. To be the leader of God's people. And the Bible says that God's glory manifested upon Moses' life. Amen. Amen. And before I just explain something here, so can I mention something here? That God can test the obedience in different ways. Amen? God can test the obedience in different ways. With Abraham, it was just a simple statement, Abraham, leave your country and go. Amen? And that, that, that just obedience has seen you and myself in connection with God today. Amen? 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 So God will test your obedience in different ways. Hallelujah. In different ways. That was the way God tested Abraham. But it could be a different way for you and myself today. And make sure you are, you are sensible. To understand what is happening around your life. Make sure you are just connected to the Spirit of God so you don't miss the move with Him. Because once you move it, it can cost something great in your life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So now people like Moses here, the Bible says that Moses, when he was speaking to God at the mountain, that when he came down, the Bible says that Moses' face was shining. Amen. Moses' face was shining. And the people, when they saw Moses, everyone was running away from Moses. And the Bible says that when Moses saw that people were running away from him, the Bible says that Moses put a veil on his face. And every time that Moses went in to talk with God, he removed the veil, and when he appeared to the people, he took the veil off. This was just simply meaning that Moses was just trying to tell the people that the glory you are seeing here, it is just a temporary glory. Amen. Which will not be compared to the glory that is to come into another time. Amen. Amen. Now, if people who obeyed God and they experienced God's glory through the Abrahamic covenant, now what more of us today? Amen. So that was what we called the old covenant. Amen. 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 That was we called the Old Covenant. Although it was just the shadow of something to happen in the future, but it still carried God's glory because it was God's word. And the people who obeyed God's word enjoyed, experienced the glory that accompanied the promises, the blessings of the Old Covenant. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now Paul says here, in 2 Corinthians where we've read, Paul says here, that I just want to read that. Paul says here now, 
2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, that who also, that is God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, just understand here. Amen? Amen? The old covenant was based on law, on the law. Amen? And the law showed the people the need of something, but the law was powerless to help the people receive, achieve their need. Amen? Amen? The old covenant pointed to the law. But the law could not help. People were not able to keep the law. And the law could not save people. So Paul here says that God has made us sufficient to the point that he has made us, he has qualified us to be ministers of the new covenant. Same as people like Moses were ministers of the old covenant. Today, you and me, we are ministers of the new covenant. Which is not written on the letter, but it is written on the word. Amen. Amen. The old covenant is an outside experience into us. But the new covenant, it is an inward experience reflecting its glory outside. This is why you see that when God gave Moses the tablets of commandments and when the people did not obey God's law, God punished them. Amen. 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 A relationship that ushers us into something eternal. This is why you see today, if you, I, sin today, I do not lose my salvation. I do not lose my salvation. All I need to do is to acknowledge, is to confess God I have sinned and forgive my sins. And God will forgive me, isn't it? I do not lose my salvation. Because salvation is eternal, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Now, God has made us ministers of the new covenant. Hallelujah. And the covenant that is not written on the letter, but it is written on our hearts through the release, the giving of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 And as ministers of the new covenant, amen, we reflect the glory that is attached to the blessings of the new covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. We are carrying that glory. That comes as obedience to God's words. Amen. 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 And now what happens here? Can I say that the new covenant now? All right. I was trying to make a point here about this kind of relationship that started in the Old Testament. And now I was trying to make a point that as Abraham believed in God, obeyed God's command that he entered into a covenant with God, that has seen us today calling ourselves children of God. Because through this covenant that the Lord Jesus Christ came forth, Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that there is glory. That is eternal. And no longer the glory that accompanied the old covenant that was temporary. That was just the shadow of the glory that you are carrying as a minister of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obedience relationship covenant. And can I say something here? Just as I forgot to mention this, that the covenant, it is a sacrificial relationship. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we've seen how God asked Abraham to offer sacrifice as means of establishing his covenant with Abraham, isn't it? Amen. There was a sacrifice made. And with us here, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, that giving thanks to the Father God who qualified us to be partakers of the blessings of, of to be partakers of the inheritance of the of the inheritance of the blessings in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Now, to us here, we've been ushered into the new covenant through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. And we've been made qualified. This is what Paul is explaining here, that God has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new Amen. Amen. You and I did not pay anything, did not do anything, but it was all done on the cross of Calvary. And as, long, and as we believe in him, our faith in him results in us entering into the covenant with him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus has qualified us to be partakers in the blessings of the new covenant. Amen. To inherit the blessings in the new covenant of the new covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. But can I always refer back to where we came from? Obedience into relationship to an eternal relationship. Amen. 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 <laughs> now we are going to read a few verses here that are going to usher us into something that we want just to look at as part of the blessings of the new covenant. Ah, let us read 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4. So we read verse 6 and verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. For it is the God who commanded light to shine 
out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. The knowledge of the glory of God. Now verse 7 explains it a little bit more clear. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. <laughs> the knowledge of the glory of God. That the excellence of his power may not be of us, but from him. Now what I want to explain here is that Paul says that. So we have this treasure in, in, in these earthly vessels, in our bodies, amen? In us, in this flesh that we carry. And what is the treasure? The treasure is the knowledge of the glory of God to the point that even when we go through hardships, when we go through challenges, when we go through the attacks from the enemy, we are not destroyed because of the treasure that is bestowed in us, the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen. And this is the greatest blessing of the New covenant. Hallelujah. That we, we have a treasure in us. And as I was saying that, just from the beginning, that whether it was in the old covenant, God released his glory to confirm the covenant. Amen. Although that was temporary, although that was just the shadow of the things that are happening today that we are enjoying today, now how much more glory we receive, we carry, we praise with boldness as ministers of the new covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the pastor Samuel was preaching a few weeks ago on these verses, on some of these verses, where Paul says that, let us commend ourselves as ministers of the gospel. Amen. And the word of God reminded us that regardless of the situation we may find in ourselves, we should not compromise our status as ministers. And no challenge, no hardship, no situation should make you change your position in him as a minister of the gospel. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the treasure is the knowledge of the glory. In us, we testify with boldness, with faith, with strength, with power. Amen. 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 So we have this hope of the glory in us, upon us, in our church, in our families, in everything that we do. We are coming. We have this hope of his glory in our midst. Amen. 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 Now here, Colossians 1, 27, here, this is one of the verses that I like. Now here, so this is why I'm trying to explain that the old covenant, the glory in the new covenant is much greater than the glory in the old covenant. Amen. And we people experience greater blessings than the blessings that were released in the old covenant. Even when God spoke to Abraham, but the Bible says in Colossians 1.27, is someone there? Is someone there? Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Chapter 1, verse 27. Mm 
even great men of God like Moses who, who spoke with God as man speaks to another man did not get a privilege the grace to be revealed about this mystery <laughs> amen and the mystery is that Jesus Christ in us the hope of the glory that we are preaching today. Amen. 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 So this is the hope that we have in us concerning the glory that is bestowed in us, upon us. It is Jesus Christ in us, the hope of this glory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The glory of the new covenant is greater than the glory of the old covenant. And obedience ushers us into the relationship through the covenant with him. Amen. And being qualified as ministers of this covenant today, which carries much glory than the glory that our forefathers experienced. Amen. 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 But this is all the result of our prisons. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That we are into a covenant with him. He has qualified us. He has qu Jesus Christ on the cross has paid the sacrifice that was needed for us to enter into eternal covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the hope of this glory, it is him, Jesus Christ, in us. That is the hope. In whatever situation, in each and every moment, the hope is, is him in you. It is him among us. The hope of all glory. Can we stand up on our feet? He's been trying to show me time is over. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of all glory. The hope of all blessings. The hope of all miracles. The hope of his grace upon our lives. Hallelujah. We just want to pray. This morning. Oh, can you see the song we sang? So we just want to pray that. He helps us. Remain obedient to his way. And enjoy the blessings. 
of the covenant, of the new covenant. My eyes are new, Jesus. Let him be magnified in your life. He's highly exalted. And there is nothing that he can do. There is nothing he can do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Just want us to pray for ourselves. May He help us. Be my oh, oh Lord, oh Lord. Just pray for yourself. May the Spirit of God help you remain obedient to His word. Be my oh, oh Lord. Oh. We just praying, people of God. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be my I just raise up your voice and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Spirit of God. That gives us the ability and the power to be obedient, to remain obedient to your word. And as we apply our faith in your word, oh Lord, we have hope of your glory upon us as your church, as your people, upon us as individuals, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the grace, for the blessings of the new covenant. We thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you have qualified us to be partakers of the blessings of this great covenant, oh Lord. And we thank you, Father God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this morning, that you have released your grace, your power, your anointing, through your word, to empower us, to strengthen us, to bless us, to transform us, to change situations around us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you receive glory and honor, Jehovah God, for your presence in our midst. Mighty men of valor, may you do alone what you can do, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Lord, for this great treasure in us. The knowledge of your glory that sustains us in each and every moment, Father. I pray, O oh God, for your church. I pray for your people. May you release your glory, O oh Lord, as promised through the eternal covenant, O oh Lord, that you have ushered us into through the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ on the cross. I thank you that we are sealed by your Spirit of God, that we belong to you. And you, our Father, we bless your word. We bless your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen.